welcome back in the kitchen. I'm going to show you the most ba basic baking recipe today for no stir bread, which tastes really, really good. And everything we do here is whole grain, so you can actually get quite juicy and quite light whole grain bread. I'll do some types with gluten, I'll also do a gluten free version. So, regardless of whether you can tolerate gluten or not, you should have something, or you should see something you can use here. Let us start out with the gluten free version. So, what I've done here is I've already found all the ingredients. And um, a trick when you bake is actually to use a weight. So, rather than going by volume, go by weight because you know, sometimes you have to be quite accurate in the amounts of different ingredients and if you go by volume you might be a quarter cup off in the amount of water or flour whatever you're measuring and that can actually make for a disaster because sometimes you have to be, be very specific and precise and accurate in the amounts of different ingredients and the proportions between them. Anyway, back to our gluten-free bread. <coughs> so all these breads do contain a bit of yeast, not very much. Um, but there is a bit of yeast, so you can't do them without. <coughs> that also means this recipe is no-go if you're allergic to baker's yeast. The first thing we need is obviously water, yeast, and some salt. Now, the amount of yeast you need here is very small. It's actually the same as, say, something the amount the size of a pea. So that one you don't have to weigh by grams. You can just go like that with a fork or a teaspoon or a tablespoon. So we have that in our bowl. We need some salt. Obviously, we're using high quality salt here, so you could use rock salt, sea salt, um, a tablespoon. Then I have <coughs> 350 grams of water. And first, I'll just add a bit of water to the bowl because I just want to dissolve the yeast and the salt in there. So, always do that, dissolve the yeast and salt first in a bit of the water instead of all of it. Then we'll add the rest of the water. Now, I'll add my ingredients so for our gluten-free bread. I have a mixture of brown rice flour, so I'll add that. Here I have some buckwheat flour, that of course will... Um, Together will be the main base of bread, but I also have some isfacula, or the pro I mean, as a trademark, it's called husk, which is this kind of seed that soaks up water, and here it's ground up very finely. So when I add that with the water and the flour, it, act it will actually absorb the water and create a sort of gel, so that will give you the same effect as gluten. So I'll add that, and then I will add my buckwheat flour and now usually you're told with bread that you have to knead it from here and until the end of time that's completely unnecessary in fact all you have to do is stir it together so as soon as it's been mixed like that you're fine now we're going to leave this dough at room temperature for 24 hours, so that will get it fermenting, and that will um, start removing some of the anti-nutrients and <coughs> will enhance the flavor and will also give the dough time to set. So for the fiber, and give to soak up all the water and get a sort of glutinous, um, gluten-like texture. So we'll just leave this and then we'll bake it at a really high temperature. So. That's the first one. So let's just quickly make the other types of bread. <coughs> so we'll do rye bread. So here I actually have whole grain rye flour. So again, about you know an amount of yeast equivalent to a pea. Add a bit of water and about a tablespoon of sea salt. the rest of the water and then here's our whole grain rye flour now 
Now, an interesting nutritional fact about rye, as long as you can tolerate gluten, that is, is that rye is actually a fair source of lignans. So rye contains some of the very same lignans you also find in flaxseed. Of course, they are all bound as glycosides, so they will only be released after fermentation. So either, if you, I mean, if you want to get make, make use of the lignans in rye, you either need to be sure that your gut flora is really good with plenty of lactic acid bacteria that can break some of these glycosidic bonds and release the lignans, or if you leave the flour and the, the dough and bread to ferment before you bake it, that will also release the lignans. So here, as you can see, I haven't kneaded it or anything like that, I've just stirred it together. Leave it for 24 hours and then we'll bake it. And then the final. Thing we'll do is again the equivalent of about a P and a tablespoon of sea salt. And again the amount in the amount's always the same here, so I'm using 350 grams of water, 350 grams of flour, so same amount of water and flour by weight. And one tablespoon of sea salt with that, and an amount of yeast, organic of course, equivalent to about the size of a piece. So what I have here is actually whole grain durum flour. So it's durum wheat, but whole grain flour. Again, most people would expect that if you just do bread like that with whole grain durum flour, you will get a very heavy bread. In fact, if you bake it on a baking stone, you probably wouldn't, it, you'd have a hard time discerning between what is the bread and what's the baking stone. But the fact is when you do this no stir or next to no stir, no kneading way or recipe, and you leave the flour to ferment at room temperature, Absolutely stunning results. So here's our flour, our dough, and as you can see, quite liquid by normal standards, by no means all stirred together. So now we'll just cover them with a damp, a damp cloth. So you can just take a towel or a kitchen towel, wet it. Counter cover. The reason I put the damp cloth on top is to make sure that the surface doesn't dry out. So leave it like that for 24 hours. Then we'll come back and revisit our bread or dough and then bake it. And we'll bake it at a really high temperature. We'll actually bake it at about 250 degrees Celsius initially. And since the flour and dough will be quite liquid when it's been left for 24 hours. We'll act, we, you can't put it straight onto a baking stone, so we have to put it in a, in a bread form and that will keep it together. If you wanted the last little trick to make, you know, to, to make this even healthier, of course, we could actually have added some ground flax seed in there or whole flax seed. The fats in the flax seed will not go rancid during the baking because they're protected inside the bread. Or you could also do, um, add some chia seeds or chia seeds depending on how you pronounce it and actually we could also have added a few a, a small amount of lactic acid bacteria so if you really need to um, improve the diet or you know, the pre-fermentation in addition to using a bit of yeast you could actually have taken either a, a capsule of probiotics pulled it apart and poured it into the dough or if you have you know probiotics in powder form just take about a quarter teaspoon or so and add it and leave it to ferment, in which case you would get lactic acid bacteria in there as well. Bon appetit for now.